Hey friends, how you doing? It's Tim Schur. So we have the election that's coming up and people are really concerned on both sides of what's going to happen. And I just want to share a couple of tips and strategies for how you can feel safe and secure moving forward. Because what I've always told people is it doesn't matter what happens in the White House, what matters is what happens in your house. How are you showing up? It doesn't always matter what shows up, what matters is how you show up. Because there's so many elements that are out of our control. I can't uh, control whether it's going to rain today or be sunny today, but I can decide what I'm going to do if it rains or if it's sunny because that's where my power is. We all have to use our power in a way that promotes good, in a way that is loving. If I came in and worked with your company, the last thing that I would do is create a bunch of silos and get different parts of the company competing and pointing fingers at each other and blaming each other and cutting each other down because when that happens, you have conflict, you have competition instead of collaboration, you have negativity and hoarding of information and finger pointing and blaming, and that's what's happening in our election. Right? In our election, we keep dividing ourselves as Democrats and Republicans instead of calling ourselves Americans and figuring out where we can find similarities. We keep pointing out our differences, and you would not do that in a leadership position. You would not do that if you were going to be a prosperous organization or company but we're doing it with our country. So remember that Rome did not fall from outside attackers. Rome fell from inside feuding. And America is the new Rome. And I wanna make sure that our country lasts for as long as humanly possible, as, God, as long as God wants us to be here. And so that means that we have to keep finding similarities. We gotta keep loving each other. We gotta keep supporting each other. We gotta quit dividing and pointing fingers and calling names because that is not what effective leaders do. So here's what you can do to keep yourself resourceful. If you're feeling stressed, anxious, stuck, overwhelmed, these are normal, natural human emotions, especially in times of great uncertainty. We've got social, uh, injustice, we've got this uh, turbulent election that's about to happen uh, tomorrow, <laughs> right? We've got, um, you know, a worldwide pandemic that we're in the middle of. So there are a lot of reasons for people to feel scared. However, in these opportunities, there are also uh, ways that we can grow, that we can triumph. You know, there was a lot of uh, millionaires that were developed during the Great Depression of the 1920s. How is that possible? Because people kept thinking about where's the creative opportunity here? You know, how can I help? How can I serve? How can I help others to avoid pain? What can we do to make something out of nothing? You know, you can't get the rainbow without the rain. And so it might be raining right now. What we gotta do is focus on the rainbow. If we focus on the rain, we're gonna feel flooded. But if we focus on the rainbow, then we're gonna see hope. And as Les Brown always says, I just love it. He's said this to me so many times. He says, when you have hope for the future, it gives you power in the present. And ooh, I love that, right? So we've got to empower ourselves. And so I'm gonna give you my five-step strategy that will help to empower you as you go through these turbulent times that we're about to experience. So that you're focusing on the outcome that you want and if you don't get the outcome that you are hoping for with this election, you still need to focus on an outcome that is going to serve you and your family that's going to help other people as well. You gotta love yourself, you gotta love your neighbor. The Bible does not say, you know, um, you gotta like your neighbor, but it does say you gotta love your neighbor. And the reason you love your neighbor is because it brings more love into your life. If you hate your neighbor, it's going to bring more hate into your life. And you know what? Scarcity loves hate and judgment and fear. You know what prosperity loves? Love and joy and goodness. So we've got to make sure that we're developing a prosperity mindset. Okay? So step number one, when you want to refocus your mind, you've got to stop and breathe. You got to pause and breathe. Breathe in through your nose, down to your belly, slowly exhale and literally for 30 seconds, just stop and breathe. Do it with me. Take a couple power breaths in through your nose and then let it go. Now, remember, there's three phases of a breakthrough. Phase one is resistance. Phase two is confusion. Phase three is breakthrough. Phase one is resistance. 
People push back even when they should be embracing the new transformation, the new thought, the new way of being. But we tend to resist because it's not what we know. You know, they say the devil you know is better than one than the ones you don't. And so people end up sabotaging themselves because they're familiar with doing that. We want to make sure that we're not sabotaging ourselves. So if I ask you to breathe for 30 seconds to a minute and you have a hard time doing that because you want to keep going or you got other stuff to do or you got to get your to-do list done, right? That should be a red flag for you. Let that know that that's your resistance. Your biggest breakthroughs are hidden in the places you don't want to go. If you willingly go into those difficult places where you're resisting, you're going to have huge breakthroughs. You're going to have huge growth. It can be a life-changing experience for you. I've trained myself to recognize if I'm resisting doing something, I have to go there. If I can't, I must because I know that there's a breakthrough waiting for me there. And usually the breakthrough is a belief change. You're looking at something differently than you did before. It creates an aha moment. It causes you to feel differently, to notice new information that's coming in, to act differently, and to experience a new, better result. So if you are power breathing and you're like, I don't want to sit still for a minute, that needs to be a red flag for you that, oh, well, now you need to sit still for two minutes or maybe five minutes, right? And then do it a couple times a day and do it every day until you can sit still for a minute or two and then realize that you feel so much more replenished you know, I live in Indianapolis, Indiana. We have the Indy 500, those high-performance race cars zip around the track of 500 miles, right? But if they don't take a pit stop, they won't finish the race. We have to take pit stops and recharge and refocus. So step one, breathe. Step two, you refocus your thoughts on the outcome that you desire. Most people are focusing on what they don't want, what they don't like, what they don't have, and what they're afraid of. And whatever you focus on expands. And whatever you focus on most of the time, your life becomes. So we have to train ourselves. If your mind says, yeah, but what if this happens? What's the ultimate outcome that you want? And what's the benefit of that outcome? Okay, What ultimately do you want? Why do you want it? How are you going to feel? What's going to change inside of you? How are you going to think differently? How are you going to show up differently? How are you going to treat yourself differently? How are you going to treat others differently? That's what you really want. Okay. So well, I want more money so that I can have more free time or I can feel confident or I can spend more quality time with my loved ones. You can do all that right now. You can do all that right now. with Right where you're at with the money that you have, you can do all of that right now. But we put these barriers in our mind. So I want you to focus on what is the outcome that you want and start to get more clarity. You got to name it so you can claim it, right? So you breathe and you focus on the outcome that you want. And then step three, take one action. One action in whatever direction you need to go. Just take one action forward. Because a lot of times people lose momentum because they're not taking action. They're watching TV, they're drinking alcohol, smoking cigarettes, eating sugar, spending money, watching porn. They're not uh, changing their mindset. They're not empowering themselves. They're distracting themselves. They're sweeping it under, under the rug. They're putting their head in the sand. And that is a good way to get bulldozed over. So instead of distracting, we have to get clear and we've got to start focusing on, all right, I need to move forward. Abraham Lincoln said the best way to predict the future is to just go ahead and create it. So we're going to get creative. You are a creator. Okay, so we got to make sure that we are standing in our creative power. So you take one action in any direction that you feel is going to move you towards that desired outcome. When you start moving towards what you want, the next step will start to come find you. Have you ever been driving in fog and you can only see 10 feet in front of you? Well, if you drive that 10 feet, the next 10 feet appear. And if you drive that 10 feet, the next 10 feet appear. And if you just keep doing that, you can actually reach your destination and not even be able to see it. Okay, so that's how it works. The universe has your back. God has your back. It might not always feel like it, but it's true. So what we want to do is make sure, you know, the, the thing is that we don't always have our back. So when we're being loving and reassuring and kind to ourselves, then we will feel like the world is being that way to us as well. Remember the book, the Jewish book, the Talmud, it says, you don't see the world as you are, or you don't see the world as it is, you see the world as you are. So we got to make sure that we are recognizing this, okay? So we're going to be very loving and supportive of ourselves. We're going to take a pause. 
breathe, focus on our desired outcome and why we want that, take one step towards it, which is step number three, and then step number four is start watching for the miracles to show up. Okay, start watching for the miracles to show up. Whatever you look for, you will find. My buddy Joe Vitale always says, money loves speed and miracles are always around us and everything is possible. And so I believe this now and it keeps showing up for me because if you believe it, you will see it. And so I'm watching for opportunities. I'm watching all of a sudden an email will come up. All of a sudden somebody will call me. We have all kinds of opportunities that will come to you if you're expecting them to show up, if you're expecting them to come to you. Okay, and when they come to you, step number five is act on them. Act on them as quickly as you can because money does love speed and so does uh, success. When you are acting on those opportunities, when you know you need to call someone, if you get a gut feeling to reach out or make a bold move, do it. Trust your gut. Trust you. You are worthy enough of being trustworthy. Okay, you are already enough. You have nothing to prove. You're already good. So we can focus then on trusting ourselves. You know that every time you don't trust your gut, you're like, oh, why didn't I listen to me? Great question, okay? So start listening to yourself. Trust your gut. Take action because when the, when the world gives you a clue for what to do to get what you want and you act on it, it's like, oh, we got a live one here. Give them more, give them more, give them more. And you start having more and more clues for how to get what you want and how to take that idea that you had and manifest it into your reality. So those are the five steps. Power breathe, focus on what you want, get clear on the outcome and why you want it, then take a step towards it. Then as you're doing this, start noticing the opportunities that are around you or create some. Call up somebody, call up a friend, hire a coach. I have had growth over my life. It goes, I go up and then I crash, but then I come up a little bit higher in business and then I crash and I come up a little bit higher in business and crash a little bit. Higher, that's how my life has been in, in business for the last 25 years, working for myself, okay? And every time it crashed and I came back up, there was always a key factor there. I had hired a coach. I had hired a coach at every level, I had hired a coach, right? Which is why I became a coach, because it was so valuable for me, I wanted to return the favor. So I mentor and coach lots and lots of people now because of how important it was for me. And those coaches help me with my marriage. They help me with my self-esteem. They help me with my health. They help me with my business. They help me with, um, you know, my spirituality. And it was so impactful. And so sometimes you got to create some magic by reaching out to a coach or trading services with somebody and saying, "Hey, I'm good at this. You're good at that. Can we do a little swapping here and help each other out?" And uh, and it works out really, really well. So that you're not trying to do it all by yourself because. Doing it all by yourself is the hard way of doing it. Get that feedback, learn from others, be a giver. Don't worry about people ripping you off or stealing your stuff. You've got so much inside of you that that's impossible because you'll always show up with more. You'll always have more, right? So show up abundant instead of being scared. If you're not sure if your mind is set up for success or not, go take this quiz my buddy Randy Gage created. It's free, you don't have to put your email or anything, but I took it, my friends have taken it, and we've all found limiting beliefs, and we're like, what? Because this belief will let you, or this test will let you know if you're gonna be wealthy or not, right? If you have a prosperity mindset or a scarcity mindset, and I bet you have scarcity thoughts in your brain because we've all grown up in an atmosphere where it's prevalent to have a scarcity mindset. So if you go to www.surviving2thriving.me forward slash PQ, it stands for Prosperity Quotient. We have an IQ, we have an EQ, and now we have a PQ, right? So P is in Paul, or prosperity. So www.surviving2thriving.me forward slash PQ, and take that test and find out. So I want you to use these five steps in this strategy to start feeling strong and confident and resourceful beginning now. And then we'll figure out what happens with the election. Whatever happens, the world is going to continue to move forward. We're going to take lemons and we're going to make lemonade out of them. It doesn't matter who's going to win this election because it is a drop in the giant pond of life. How many presidents have we had You know, through our, through our years? How long have you been? I'm 50. I've been on this planet 50 years. How many presidents have, have we gone through? Okay, Presidents have temporary positions, but you are the captain of your life. And you have the ability over a 5, 10, 20 year period, you're able to create whatever you want if you believe it and you use these steps. So I hope you do and I hope this helps. 
and you take care of yourself. We'll talk to you soon.